Matt here with Mobile Solar Consulting. Today we're gonna to be doing a comparison between Class T and MRBF fuse holders. So we're gonna be explaining to you what they are, the difference between the two, and then we're gonna be testing them and really seeing how hot they get under a given load. So your Class T fuse is kind of regarded as your highest level of protection in your typical mobile electrical system. It's got 20,000 amps of amperage interrupt capacity. So that means that even if there was an insanely massive short circuit that was over 10,000 amps, approaching 20,000 amps, this fuse would still be able to blow and open the circuit safely. Whereas another fuse, if there was 20,000 amps flowing through that fuse, it may end up blowing and then welding itself back together immediately because there's so much current that it's not physically capable of opening that circuit and doing its job. So the Class T fuse has the highest level of protection, but the MRBF fuse is still really impressive with 10,000 amps of interrupt capacity. And it's got a much smaller profile, it's cheaper. Um, so today we're gonna be talking about a little bit of the differences between the two and when you might want one versus the other. But most importantly, we're gonna be looking at how hot they get under a given load. So we've got two heat guns here. We're gonna be cranking this system up to around 100 amps. Maybe we'll end up pushing it to 125. We'll, we'll see what the system can handle because this is a 24 volt system so it's a little bit lower current than a 12 volt system but uh, we're going to see what this system can handle and we're going to measure with our thermometer and our temperature gun our infrared camera to see you know just how hot things are getting so the purpose of any fuse is really to protect your wires the fuse is not there to protect your charge controller or your inverter, it's to protect your wires and to keep this insulation from melting and burning. A lot of people will size fuses in different ways. We basically just size them for what ABYC tells us to size them to. So uh, Blue Sea Systems has a really helpful chart, I'll link in the description, which explains the allowable, maximum allowable fuse size given the conditions that the wire is installed in. So if your wire is installed in an engine room, for example, they're gonna require a smaller fuse size. If your wire is installed in a tight bundle along with a bunch of other wires, they're gonna require a smaller fuse size, but they're gonna allow you to carry more current on this wire if it's installed in free air, if it's outside of an engine room. So lots of factors that play there, but generally speaking, we've got non-bundled cables here, and this is a one-aught wire. So we've got a 300 amp fuse for the Class T and a 300 for the MRBF. And our main objective today is just to compare how hot they get. We're not gonna be testing their amperage interrupt capacity. Uh, I don't have the capability to pump 20,000 amps through this circuit. And even if I did and the fuse failed, I wouldn't have a safe way of disconnecting the system at that time if the fuse did fail. So I'm not gonna be doing that today. That has already been tested by third parties. Both the MRBF holder and the Class T holder are UL listed, meaning Underwriters Laboratory has tested them and to some extent has confirmed that they meet that 10,000 and 20,000 amp rating. So we're gonna start by running 100 amps through this Class T fuse. And then because the switch will also get warm, when we do remove this fuse, we're gonna land the fuse holder in the same spot attached to the switch. Right now we have it attached to the switch through a link bar. It's an LB2, so it's a very heavy duty conductor. So it's, it's the best that we can do to keep these tests equal. One thing to note is this fuse holder is torqued to spec at 21.5 newton meters and this is a FLIR temperature camera. I don't know how much I trust this thing because I'm pointing it right at the spot where I have the thermocouple underneath of the nut and I'm getting 25.5 degrees Celsius and the 
Thermocouple is telling us it's 33.6. I definitely trust the 33.6 more because it does feel just a tiny bit warmer than the temperature in the room here, which is about 25 degrees Celsius. Without further ado, let's start heating things up. We've got our heat guns on now. We're pulling 139 amps and we're gonna keep taking measurements with both temperature measurement tools every 30 seconds. About 35.6, 41.3. So we finished our test at 15 minutes. We pretty much maxed out the inverter by pulling 140 amps and taking readings every 30 seconds got to about 60 degrees Celsius at the hottest point which is very hot, but definitely still perfectly safe uh, within what we expected. All the cables are a little bit warm, definitely warm to the touch. The terminals on the batteries are warm to the touch, but you know, everything's within a normal range. So we're gonna let this cool down, charge the batteries back up and repeat. All right, we got the new fuse in. Let's get things heating up. 27.7 and 40.1. So we've got our MRBF fuse here. The max temperature that that one reached was about 75 degrees Celsius, uh, which is about 167 degrees Fahrenheit. For the class T, we only reached about 63 degrees Celsius, which was 145 degrees Fahrenheit. Both of those are safe. They're within what the cables can handle. The cables can handle about 90 degrees Celsius. So, you know, that's fine. But personally, anything that can be cooler is considered much safer for me. You know, they're both hot to the touch, but the Class T, I can safely just leave my finger on there for three to five seconds. The MRBF, I definitely could not touch it for more than two seconds. So, um, you know, I definitely prefer the Class T for that reason. I think a big part of it is it's got a much higher torque spec at 21.5 Newton meters and much more surface area to spread out that heat across. This has a much smaller surface area and a smaller torque rating of 8.5 Newton meters. I mean, this is meant to go right on the battery terminal. So it's nice that it protects the entire length of the wire all the way right from the battery terminal, but definitely seems like it's gonna get much hotter due to being just smaller and more fragile. In the charts we've shown for the temperatures, we decided not to show the measurements from the FLIR thermal camera. Although this is very helpful for seeing where the hottest spots are, it's not proven to be helpful for actually measuring those temperatures because it reflects off of the surface onto whatever else is nearby or behind it. Uh, we definitely felt the thermocouple was accurate. Um, so we showed the measurements from this device. So to summarize, if you're using one fuse for the entire system, it's carrying all of your current. The Class T is probably the best way to go. It's gonna stay the coolest and provide the highest level of protection. If you're using a bunch of individual fuses on each battery, say splitting up the current in your system between three, four, or five fuses, the MRBF is gonna be just fine. It's gonna save you some money, save you some space, and it works really well. If you need either of these fuses, we'll be putting the links in the description where you can pick them up. And if you need help designing a solar system that doesn't melt down and overheat, don't hesitate to reach out.